In this chapter, we've learned that particles display wave-like behavior, and we've also gone over the Bohr model, which accurately describes the quantum state of the hydrogen atom. Unfortunately, the Bohr model only works for the hydrogen atom, and therefore, for all the other atoms, we need a better model. And what we're going to do now, in order to account for the wave-like behavior of matter, is use functions that are called wave functions, and that provide the best possible description of the quantum state of a physical system. Now these wave functions just don't come out of thin air, they're actually solutions to the Schrodinger equation. But that's a very complicated equation because wave functions in general are functions of four variables. Three position variables, x, y, z, and time. Since that's a bit involved mathematically, we're going to make our life a bit easier and consider the time-independent Schrodinger equation for only one variable x in terms of position. So we're only going to look at the x-axis. In that case, the Schrodinger equation is minus h bar squared over 2m d2 psi x over dx squared plus u of x psi x is equal to e total psi x. U is the potential energy, E total is the total energy, and psi x is the time-independent wave function that is only a function of one variable x for position. And if we can find the solutions to this equation, then we get wave functions, psi x, that are the best possible description of the quantum state of our physical system. But we also get psi x squared. All you have to do is square it. And that is interesting because psi squared is a probability density function. And therefore, we can use psi squared to find the probability of finding a particle in a little interval of width dx. In fact, that probability, dp, is equal to psi x squared dx. Now, the integrated form might make more sense. If you want the probability of finding the particle in between two positions, say x1 and x2, and let's write that the probability that the location big X of the particle be between x1 and x2, and that's the integral from x1 to x2 of psi squared dx. And of course, since the particle must be somewhere on the x-axis, we also have the following condition. The integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi squared x dx has to be 1, because the probability of finding the particle somewhere on the x-axis is equal to 1. We're sure that the particle is somewhere. Now this is called the normalization condition and we'll see how to use it in the following example. So this is a very brief and simple introduction to the Schrodinger equation, but we're going to do a very classic problem next so that you see how we can use this equation and how we can use wave functions to describe the state of a particle.